In this video, we'll talk about Salmonella enterica and Salmonellosis. Salmonella enterica is a species of bacteria that belongs to Enterobacteriaceae family. It's a gram-negative rod-shaped bacterium and it is one of the major cause of foodborne illnesses worldwide. Salmonella is responsible for the Salmonellosis disease, which is characterized by diarrhea, abdominal cramp, fever and vomiting. Salmonella is subdivided into two major species, S. enterica and S. bangori, and it has more than 2,400 uh, 2, serotypes. Generally, people confuse the name of the serotypes with the subspecies. So, S. enterica has a serotype known as typhi, which generally people call as Salmonella typhi, and this is the one of the most common cause of Salmonellosis. Salmonella is one of the most common foodborne uh, pathogens, and generally, its incidence is pretty high in South Asian and African countries. This particular disease was first discovered and observed by an American scientist known as Dr. Daniel Elmer Salmon in 19th century. From his name, it is known as Salmonella. It's gram-negative, it's facultative anaerobic, meaning it can survive in both aerobic and anaerobic condition and it does not form spores. Let us talk about the lab diagnosis. So lab diagnosis involves specific uh, differential media, so, such as uh, SS media, that is Salmonella shigella agar media, and the colonies for Salmonella would uh, appear as blackish, just like this plate. And there is also another test known as triple sugar iron uh, agar test. In this case, H2S gas would be produced and it would ultimately lead to a black precipitate in the medium that you can see here. Anyway, transmission of Salmonella can occur from contaminated food or contaminated water source. Other than that, there could be fecal to oral uh, transmission. Imagine a vegetable field is infected, by, infested by some kind of like fecal matter which has the Salmonella and if that vegetable is not washed properly and somebody eats salads out of it, then he might get contaminated. Other than that, unpasteurized milk, raw meat, contact with poultry animals or from reptiles, this can be transmitted. Let's talk about the pathology. In order to understand that, we have to look at the intestinal histology a little bit. So this is how the intestinal histology look like. You have mucosa, submucosa, muscularis and serosa. So the mucosal cells are generally infected by the salmonella. They uh, engulf the salmonella and via endocytosis. Eventually, salmonella uh, gets on the other side into the submucosal surface where macrophages actually uptake these salmonella. So, salmonella pass through the endothelial cells in the submucosa and are uptaken by the macrophages. But macrophages can grow in number and I mean these salmonella bacteria can grow inside the macrophages as an intracellular pathogen and then uh, it can ultimately go to the reticuloendothelial system where the bacteria can multiply and ultimately form lymphoid hyperplasia or hypertrophy. Also, Salmonella can re-enter the bowel via liver or gallbladder that can amplify the overall uh, infection. Also, some amount of uh, bacteria can be uh, engulfed by the macrophages which are leading to which are giving rise to specific kind, kind of cytokines which are pro-inflammatory in nature and this would create inflammation in the intestine and it lead to diarrhea and abdominal cramp like symptoms some of the salmonella can enter the bloodstream they can ultimately lead to bacteremia ultimately these bacteria can uh, go to different organs such as lung, heart and liver and form focal salmonella infection. Now salmonella, the symptoms of salmonella includes nausea, vomiting and abdominal pain. Other symptoms might include chill, anorexia and maculopapular rash but these are not present in all the uh, patients. Now the symptoms of salmon, salmonella infection occurs for 12 to 48 hours after the exposure to pathogen and the symptoms last typically for 2 to 5 days before resolution. So it has to be treated properly with antibiotic because otherwise it can cause specific fever which might be life threatening. 
Treatment options include specific antibiotics such as ciprofloxacin, azithromycin, sulfamethoxazole, etc. Other than that, replenishing the body fluid and electrolyte is quite essential. In, ca in severe cases, hospitalization might be important and IV fluids can replenish uh, the proper balance of electrolytes in the body. So if you are infected with salmonella, consult a doctor ASAP. I hope this was useful. Get notes and flashcards in my Facebook page or Instagram page. Links are provided in the description. You can support our channel using Super Thanks. You can contribute uh, via Paytm, PayPal or UPI. So see you in next video.